What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 61 of the Charge to the Top here with Hereford FC and we are back for the second time here in January for another live com special. If you missed last episode go check it out, it was about an hour long. It was kind of, you know, free games, lots of the nitty gritty stuff that you don't necessarily normally see with my series and we're going to be doing a little bit more of that today. Since the last episode, as I mentioned at the end of the previous episode, I decided I wasn't going to do the entirety of January, but rather just the free games to end January. Because of the FA Cup draw, we had a replay to play. We were playing Wigan, who were bottom of the league, who I, well, I expected us to win and we did beat them both. You can see here, we beat Wigan, who are bottom of the league, they are struggling. Kevin Kelly grabbed four. It was relatively comfortable in the end. There's, the stats kind of make it seem like it's closer than it was. We actually hit the woodwork three times in that game. And then following on from that, we played Dulwich Hamlet in the FA Cup third round replay. Decided to stick again with a rotated side. We won 4-3. It was as convincing, I guess, as a 4-3 can be. Liam Evans did grab two. Great for his confidence, obviously, a player who's been lacking that confidence. Delighted for him, and uh, well, hopefully, you know, if we do need to call upon him, he can start to bang them in. So anyway, in today's episode, of course, we are going to be kind of talking through things as we go. We're going to be starting off with a game against Brentford, we then take on Norwich, and then we're going to be ending things up with Huddersfield. So anyway, the game against Brentford today, we're going to get straight into definitely the toughest of the games that we have in today's episode. They currently sit... Uh, second in the league. They have a very, very good defensive record. They're going to be difficult to break down. I'm hoping, obviously, that we can get a result against them because, well, with that game against Wigan, which was our game in hand, we have climbed up the league that little bit more, you know, up to 11th. And, well, I still have an eye on the playoffs. You know, that's still kind of the lofty goal this year. You know, we're only four points now off Burnley, whereas if we look kind of below ourselves, we're 14 points clear now of Ipswich. We're in a great position to maybe have a push uh, you know, in this second half of the season and see where we can end up. Obviously, we were on a really bad run of form um, kind of over the start of December, end of November. Since then, we've bounced back well. Obviously, last episode, we went unbeaten, hoping that we can do more of the same today. So anyway, going into this Brentford game, of course, we have got a few injuries to contend with. Harry Lennon, the injury. Uh, he's got a dislocated draw, out for four to three weeks. Not going to be available for today's episode. A bit of a shame, obviously, the 28-year-old, a massive component of our first team. In his place, of course, Rumsby going to get given the nod, of course, on loan from Newcastle. A player who was on loan last year, played a few times for us. This year, you know, he's played again. He's been playing fairly well. And I'm hoping that he can give a good performance, of course, for us once more. Anyway, Chucky, of course, still on the African Cup of Nations kind of journey with Nigeria so unfortunately he isn't available for selection does mean in goal we do go with Rob Elliott of course an experienced head there a left back of course our back four all but full strength with the exception of Harry Lennon a left back we go with Sean Kavner a player who's played fairly well to start the season you know 28 years old came in on a free the left back position an area of the pitch which I definitely needed to improve and I think it's hard to say it has been improved with Kavner's addition a right back of course Gustavo Rojas now natural at playing right back must have good adaptability this player I think I think it's adaptability which impacts how quickly a player learns a new position but either way yes he's now a natural right back obviously he's played a fair amount of games there played half a season there he knows what he's doing now and um, a great player of course to have at fullback you can see he's got his full kind of lemon slices that it's completely full um, of course, because of how well um, he's learned that role. I don't know what these are called. What are they? I mean, I call the attributes polygon the polygon. As far as I'm concerned, these little circles, they're lemon slices with segments filled. So he's a full lemon. Anyway, centre back, we've got Rumsby and Dickey. Dickey, of course, joined us this year from AFC Wimbledon. He's done pretty well this year. I really can't fault his kind of contribution to the team. Up in the midfield, of course, we go with our new record transfer, Tristan Nydam. He's had a fairly solid start to his time at the club, a 7.0 average rating across three league games. Hoping he can really step up once more for us today. Alongside him, we go with Tom Davies, 24 years old. Been a very good performer this year. Been pleasantly surprised by how much uh, work this guy's put in. He's adapted quite well as well to playing as a centre mid on the support duty. You know, he's a, he's a very, very well-rounded um, kind of centre midfielder. You can see here, you know, just kind of a jack of all trades. Not necessarily a master of none, but um, he, he's just a very well-rounded player and he's done very, very well for us this season, Tom Davies. Only 24 as well, so a player with a bit of a future ahead of him, I think, in our side. Anyway, out on the left, I don't know if I want to go with Jack Barnby. You know what? I might make a controversial decision and bring in Anthony Ford. I feel like Anthony Ford here, he's done very, very well out on the left. You know, obviously, he's right-footed, not ideal cutting inside, but three goals and five assists from 21 games, of which 10 are on off the bench. Nothing to be scoffed at, so we are going to give him the nod there. On the right-hand side, we, of course, go with Jay Beckford. Experienced kind of player now at this level, you'd feel. Of course, was previously at Arsenal. He's had 27 games in the championship, been a mainstay of our first team. Seven assists, three goals, 
obviously massive, massive player when it just comes to his raw pace. He's very, very capable of kind of, I guess, terrorising the opposition kind of team. And I'm hoping that he's obviously going to give the left back a torrid time today. Of course, our two remaining players, James Madison, been out for a little while with a twisted ankle back in the side today. Almost back to full fitness as well, which is great to see. And uh, playing ahead of him, we are, of course, going with Kelly, Kevin Kelly, the Scotsman. Player of the year so far for me. 18 goals, 12 assists. He's been bossing it. And hopefully, of course, we can get a good result here. We're taking on, however, Brentford. They are second in the league. Definitely the toughest game of today's episode. But given the aspirations I have for us in this second half of the season, this is the kind of game that I want to at least be getting a point out of, if possible. It's going to be tricky, though. Away from home, Brentford, a tremendously good side. And, uh, yeah, it's it's not going to be easy at all for us to do something today. We're going to have to be on our best, you'd feel. And I feel like with Harry Lennon, Captain Fantastic, missing, uh, that task is going to be made all that more difficult. But, you know what, we'll see what we can do here. Brentford, they're a good side, but they're not an unbeatable side by any means. They have a very, very good defensive record. But I think they've only scored 31 goals in 27 games. So, they're great defensively. They struggle for goals, though, averaging just over one goal a game. So you'd feel, if we can break the deadlock, we have a chance to certainly get something from the spoils of this match. Anyway, 25 minutes gone, 50-50 game, not a lot happening either way. A distinct lack of shots, not the most entertaining of matches so far. Maybe it can liven up now as we do approach the half-time mark. Ten minutes left of this half. You'd have to say we've been doing okay. Gustavo Rojas apparently making a few mistakes at right back. His 6.4 rating, perhaps a slight indication of that. But, well, you'd have to say we've had a few more shots than Brentford, but it's not been a classic of a first half. They're good defensively. We're good attackingly. We've kind of just cancelled each other out. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased with that half. Good fired-up response is what I want to see. James Madison on a 6.4. Not the greatest for him, but he really is a game-changer for us, Madison. You know, there's some players here, if they're on a 6.4 in the final third, I might even contemplate a slightly reactionary substitute at half-time. But I look at Madison... He's such a big player for us. His set pieces, particularly his free kick taking, obviously can single-handedly win you games. And he's a he's an important player, I think, to have on the pitch. But we do have other free kick takers. Anthony Ford, very, very good as a um as a free kick taker. He's another alternative that we do have. And yeah, we'll have to play things by ear, ear here. Gustavo Rojas really hasn't had the greatest day at the office. Part of me wants to sub him off. And in fact, actually, I think I am going to do that now as we approach the hour mark. Luke O'Neill going to come in for him, although Luke O'Neill's fitness is a problem, as is Rob Dickey's. I assume he's just taken a knock. You know what? I'm going to play Will Packwood at right back, I think. Not an ideal kind of solution because Packwood, not so great going forward, but we'll try and make it work. Anthony Ford, not at the greatest of games. We'll bring on Jack Barnby for him, making a few changes to maybe liven things up as we do go into the latter stages of this, the second half. They're making a few changes of their own. They've brought on Jack Fox. But, um, well, it looks like it could be a bore draw, doesn't it? There's definitely a goal in this game, though. I feel, I can feel it. I can feel it tingling. You know, 20 minutes left, something is going to happen. We can't have a match where there's not a highlight in a live commentary. I maybe have one or two of these all year. And, well, we're going to have a chance here. Nidham to Barnby. Jack Barnby, the sub. Back to Nidham. And is it Nidham? It is Nidham. First goal of the season for him. Record transfer from Newcastle. It's his fourth appearance. It's his first goal. He's been superb, really, considering he's come you know, kind of newly into the team, had to learn this system. Previously had loan spells in the Dutch top flight, and while there was an element of quality about the finish there by him. Of course, at, Le uh, at Switch in real life, only 16 years old, a player with a very hot prospect. I, know, I read up on him a little bit. Mick McCarthy tipping him for great things, and, well, great things could be coming because he's just scored a great goal for us there, squeezes it in. And I feel like it's time now just to drop everyone a little bit deeper. I know Beckford can't play right midfielder. I am training him to play there so that when we do want to go a little bit more conservative, it's an option. But yeah, we're just going to drop everything a little bit more now. And another thing I really like about Nidham is he's got 13 tackling. He's so good at trying, kind of winning the ball. And that's a very useful thing, obviously, to have with our team. But yeah, we're going to go a little bit more defensively now. You know, we're playing the team who are... Well, they're, they're doing very well in the league. They're up in second, and it's going to be tricky. I can't cancel the pending tra uh, changes. Surely what happened against Reading last episode isn't going to happen again, where I try and go more defensive and I don't make the changes in time and they score. It is. I mean, can I complain about that? Like, Is that my fault? That happened against Reading last time out, where I... Um, I changed to you know a more defensive system immediately after we conceded the goal. Like I couldn't have done it quicker, and yet we concede immediately. I feel a little bit hard done by there, if I'm being completely honest. But we'll go on the front foot once more. You know, try and push on. 
We have lost a few games from a one-goal margin, so that perhaps is cause for concern. But I don't feel like we've been outclassed in this game, and I think we've still got a goal in us. Five minutes left of this. Madison, dispossessed. I mean, I said I'd take a draw in this game. I've kind of changed that tune, haven't I, with the more attacking system. But, well, we're trying to make something happen here. Kevin Kelly, he could be through. Can he finish it? He can't. Dispossess Beckford! What a finish that is by that man. Right, I'm now going to pause the game. I forgot, we're actually still on counter. You know what? We'll just stick with what we're doing, because apparently it's working. We're playing on the counter-attack. I forgot to change that back to attacking, but it's what wonders for us. It's a happy accident. I thought Kevin Kelly was destined to finish that. He gets tackled. Beckford, first time. Lovely finish, picks his corner, places it in there, and while Brentford, 2-1 down, surely we can't bottle this like we did against Reading. We've had a, a pretty good January, all things considering, and if we could get a win here, which it looks like we are going to get, I mean, what a start to this month it's been. I say start to the month, we're halfway through the month at this point, but well, what a start to this episode it's been. 2-1 it finishes away from home, very, very happy with that, boys, fantastic performance, great finish by Jay Beckford to get us the winner, that sees us move up to ninth, and again, I'm just going to keep looking at the playoffs, Burnley still four points away, but it's a crucial win for us, and, uh, well, you can see here, Brentford, they've only lost seven games this year, they've um, been very, very good, kind of defensively as well, they've conceded 16 goals, I said if we scored two against them, I found it favoured us to do something, and, well, we did score two against them, and, uh, well, it got us the win, as expected. Who won against Sheffield Wednesday at the top of the table? Looking at the bottom of the table, for people curious, we're going at Colchester and Ipswich, currently occupying those spots. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Obviously, we came up with Colchester and Birmingham, who have fairly well established themselves, Birmingham City, to be fair, up in 17th. Anyway, Rojas now a very good performer at right back. That's obviously we saw that before. Needham, he's doing well. He's progressing well as a defensive midfielder. Worth noting that with Needham, uh, I am, if we just look, training him as a roaming playmaker, but on the defensive midfielder role, because I think it'd be useful to have him able to play defensive midfielder if I do want to drop in kind of a, a more defensive player. And obviously, he's quite quite adapted to the defensive game. You know, maybe his marking's lacking, but great positioning, great tackling, good decision-making, fairly good aggression and anticipation as well. You know, he's capable of kind of reading the play quite nicely, which is good. Anyway, let's continue on, shall we? Of course, this is a live com triple header. Norwich is our next game. Players, I don't know how much longer they've got rested. They've only got one more day. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to... Um, Cancel the rest if I can. I've got to deselect the players who aren't on rests. Recall to training, and then I'm just going to rest them all again because I need players at full fitness. And, well, we've played quite a lot of games in a short period of time, and it's going to be important for these men that um, they are fully rested. Who, who? Oh, Mayor Waters, because he's out on loan, it means that I can't rest the rest of the players. I wish there was a way around that. It would be convenient. I'm actually going to move Mayor Waters to the under-23s, of course, on loan at Oxford City as things stand. But anyway, you'd have to say that was a great result against Brentford, and hopefully, obviously, now we can kick on. We've got a fairly kind fixture against Norwich. They are a team, actually, that they got relegated from the Premier League, of course, in real life, and in this series, they've just been stuck in the Championship for a number of years. They're kind of a... I don't want to say a distinctly average side, but they don't kind of wow me too much, and I'm hoping that we can get a good performance against them. Anyway, Rojas uh, wants to talk about going to Motherwell. I mean, it, it's not happen, happening, Gustavo. Um, there's rumours floating around that Motherwell are interested in signing me. A better division. I, I mean, I don't want to poo on the um, the Scottish Premier League, but I don't feel like there's a big that bigger kind of gap. Anyway, I'm going to tell him I don't want to lose him, and I want him to show some faith in the youngsters. I'm not willing to wait for them to develop. I want to... I don't want to delay him to go to Motherwell. I'm, there isn't even a bid that's come in yet. He's not happy. There's not even a bid that's come in and he's kicking up a fuss. You know what? I'm going to set his asking price. It's set to 5.5 .5 million. If they bid that much, they can have him for that much. That's what I'll say, Motherwell. If you come in with a 5.5 .5 million pound bid for Gustavo, he's yours. My actual worry is that the board might interfere and if they bid a few hundred thousand pounds, they might just accept it. Which wouldn't be ideal, but given our current financial situation, and given the fact that actually between last episode and this episode, I did have something like that happen, I am a little bit concerned. Unfortunately for us, Chapman, the winger who we were looking at from Middlesbrough, he's gone on uh, loan now to Nottingham Forest, which is really annoying because it's again another player who I wanted on loan, who actually he, he did decline us in this instance, but he's ended up now obviously going to them, just in Middleton, for some reason I've had that as Madison to begin with and I was getting really annoyed that he was going to be injured again, it's just a random player in our younger team, so Malky Mackay, Norwich legend, of course played centre-back for them for a number of years, he's currently their manager, um, 
But yeah, we're going to be taking on them. They could play a 4 3 one, two. I don't know how well our system matches up against that. That might be worth keeping an eye on. But anyway, Rojas. Uh, I mean, 5.5 million pounds. I'd be happy if we got that much for him. The player who I was mentioning, actually, you know, who had an offer that kind of just got accepted was, uh, as you can see here, Andrew Nicholas. £275,000 with a, you know, a varying degree of clauses. And, well, our board just accepted that and said, yeah, he's going for that price. Of course, Andrew Nicholas, one of the young Australians who actually we signed a number of years ago. We signed him when we signed Durant, uh, for those of you who can remember that, back in League 2. Um, he's not played that much for us. A few hundred thousand pounds is probably all we were ever going to get for him, and I guess it's good to get that. But at the same time, I would have liked to have had final say on it. Anyway, a few other players. Ceciliano going on, on loan to Vadas. Again, they've offered to extend his contract, which is great stuff. Um, perhaps the other player just worth mentioning is Akusu. Uh, he's gone back on loan to Libertad. We kind of talked about that last episode. He looks like a fantastic player. There is an option to recall him from loan. I don't know if we can exercise that. If I appeal for a work permit, he gets it. If then I can recall him, because it will be kind of March time. I don't know what the rules are on loan recalls. I have a feeling we can't, because it's outside of a transfer window. But I might be wrong on that front. I guess we'll play that one by ear. But ultimately, without a work permit at the moment, it's beneficial to us. Anyway, Rojas on the move. I'm going to offer him out. And if we can get if we get 5 million for him, I'll take it. We are going to lose 20% of the profit made. He's only got one year left on his deal, so that's not ideal. Griffiths is expecting to be loaned out. I feel like I already offered him out for loan, but we'll offer him out once more and see if anyone comes in. I don't really want to sell Rojas at right back, but given the club's current financial situation, if we could get a few million for him... It probably would be in our interest. No no offers made for him based on that price we offered him out for. I mean, how much would I be willing to let Gustavo Rojas go out for? I guess that's the question. He's a good right back, but he's not great when it comes to big matches. And um, obviously his consistency is a problem. You can see, considered only a good Skybet League One player, and he is injury prone. He does have enough marks against him. I actually think he's good enough for the championship, and I think he's shown that to an extent this year. I feel like if we were to get £3 million for him, I'd probably be happy with that. Maybe even 2.5. But I don't want to get lowball too much. So we're just going to slowly kind of move down his value in increments. And hope that Motherwell, you know, put in a reasonable offer. Anyway, Siciliano, uh, contract to be extended is loan at Vaduz. That's good for us as far as I'm concerned. Unfortunately, not got a work permit at the moment. You can see I can't appeal it for another 39 days. I'd rather have him playing regular first team football with Vaduz. Uh, once more rather than just kind of coming back to us and kind of languishing in our reserves. Obviously, the Costa Rican, he's playing for the national team. Vadas are giving him very good first-team football opportunities. That's all I can really ask for. Um, Andrew Nicholas has signed a deal now with, uh, is it Boa Vista? You can see here that the chairman decided that the offer was too good to refuse and took matters into his own hands. I'm a little bit annoyed about the fact it's only £47,000 initially. But I guess money is money at the end of the day. I'm wondering if we have any clauses that we can sell out. I don't know. Let's let's have a look. Because obviously if you have clauses that are existing, sometimes there's buyouts negotiated. You can see here um, there is none. There is one thing actually that I did um, since last episode. A little bit bizarre this perhaps. But obviously um, I mentioned this last episode. But with... Or is he? Needham. There was a clause involved which I agreed with Newcastle, which was I'd pay them £1.5 million if we won the championship. I actually bought out that clause like a few days ago for, I think it was, um, I can't remember, I think it was a few, it was like £60,000, which seemed like a bit of a no-brainer for the sake of saving potentially over a million pounds long term. One thing I didn't talk about with Needham as well is he does have a minimum release clause to clubs in a higher division of £4.2 million. It's lower than I'd like, and generally speaking, I obviously negotiate my players to not have a clause like that, but I couldn't sign him without that clause, which does mean if a Premier League team comes in from, we would lose him for that money. But ultimately, given our club's kind of current stature, £4.2 million is probably, you know, good enough for who he is. I feel like, obviously, midfielders, we've got plenty of them. It's not really a position we're lacking. And, I mean, as much as I don't want to lose him for that price, £4.2 million, I think I could find a suitable replacement for that. And particularly considering, obviously, we signed him for just £750,000. You know, it'd be a decent amount of money to make on that transfer. But anyway, let's get into today's next game. Obviously, a few players on a list, uh, on, a, on, on a list, on a rest is the word I was looking for. Um, 
I might change around our team a little bit. Madison's struggling a little bit. I'm actually going to bring in, I think, Hines for him at centre attack in mid. Perhaps a little bit of a bold move to drop Madison, but his form's been a bit iffy as of late. Um, in the centre of midfield, I'm also going to actually bring in Ledson just to play, and I'm actually going to play Beautyman instead of Tom Davies. I want to get some rotation going there. Obviously, the centre of midfield, we have some very talented players. They all want to be playing regular first-team football. Um, obviously, perhaps not ideal to be changing kind of your three centre midfielders, but we will try and make it work. And it's probably worth it just to get a bit of rotation going because I know Norwich are going to be lacking a bit of fitness. I think considering it's going to be a two centre mid, the kind of three centre mid battle potentially, um, it's certainly in my interest to make sure that we do have fresh legs in that area of the pitch. Anyway, looking at their team, they're going to be playing a 4 3 1 2. And I'm a little bit worried about that, but you know, Ledson and Beautyman, I think they can hopefully contain Smith, who's up top for them. That's going to be a, a tricky one. They've also still got Johnny House and definitely a player to watch out for, the 34-year-old, very good centre midfielder. And uh, Nuhu, I think he used to... I was about to say he used to play for Mallorca, and he did. You can see he's played there for a number of years, actually. Um, they signed him for £900,000. He looks like a pretty good defender. So they've got a good team here. Um, Solanke up front, obviously a standout player, of course, currently of Chelsea. Pretty good striker, pretty good pace. We've got to be wary of that. But our team is fairly fit, which is obviously a great situation to be in going into this game. Um, the January kind of fixture schedule, and in fact, just the holiday season fixture schedule in England tends to be a bit of a nightmare. Not the greatest of team talks, but we'll try and make it work. I do want to quickly just look at Norwich's team ratings. You can see they've got a few players really struggling, particularly their centre-back. So that's something to look to exploit. And also their strikers struggling a little bit as well. So they certainly are coming into this game with significantly lower fitness than us. So as this game progresses, I'm hoping obviously that we can capitalise on that and, um, you know, take the game to them, I guess. Rob Dickey, a cause for concern perhaps. His fitness less than ideal, obviously, the Harry Lennon injury means that I am a little bit kind of in a between a rock and a hard place, I guess, when it comes to our centre-backs. But, uh, well, early on here, not a lot happening. I don't think we've played against a team playing a 4-3-1-2 before, so this is a bit of a, a venture into the unknown in terms of our system. But um, we'll see what we can do here. Obviously, at half-time, not a whole lot happening. Not yet to hit the target. And, in fact, it's going to be nil-nil at half-time without a single highlight. I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy with that performance. Ledson, a bit of a confidence drop for him. I'm going to tell him that I believe in him to step up the, his game. He has reacted well to that. Hines at centre attack in mid hasn't had the greatest of games. I'm going to bring in James Madison for him. Obviously fresh-legged. Going to be looking at him to kind of plough on ahead of Kevin Kelly up top and hopefully cause those centre-backs some trouble who, uh, you know, their fitness is going to be dropping as this game progresses. I guess we're in a slightly fortuitous position whereby, although Rob Dickey's fitness is kind of a question... The Norwich strikers are equally kind of as tired, so it kind of counterbalances itself. Obviously, if they start to bring on players, that's where we could have problems. But yeah, they've brought on actually Beck at centre-back, and they've also brought on two other players. They've made all their subs after 55 minutes, which is bold. And um, obviously, two fresh-legged strikers coming on. Maybe concern for Dickey, but uh, well, we'll try and make things happen here. Beckford, he's got pace. Can he beat his man? That's the question. Dribbles out wide, whips it in. Beck, the sub... Heads it clear. Only as far as Ledson, though, although now it falls to the, the Norwich strikers, who are fresh-legged, as I already mentioned. They're going to be looking to really take the game to us, you'd think, here. Ball passed across to Nichols. Now with Smith. Poor defending this by us, and it's hit from range. It squeezes in at the far post. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to take off uh, Dickey and bring in Packwood. I do have one sub left, but I kind of want to hold on to it just for a little bit longer. But, yeah, not ideal for us at all. Trebles, the uh, the goal scorer, came on, on off the bench. Uh, first shot on target for Norwich from long, long range. Very speculative effort. He would have really backed the keeper to save it from there. But, of course, Chucky isn't the man between the sticks. It is Elliot. Hasn't got the greatest agility in the world in his old age, the goalkeeper. And, well, he did struggle to get across to the far post to stop that shot going in. And, well, Norwich taking a goal lead here at home. It's going to be tricky, you'd think, to get back into this game. The shot there slotted away nicely, in all honesty. But, um... Less than ideal for us. I am going to switch our wingers to attack. Because of the fact that Norwich aren't playing um, with wingers or any wide men, I don't need these guys to drop back quite so much in the team. So we're going to do that. I think I am going to make my last change here. I'm going to bring in Nidham for um, Ledson. He's not had the greatest of games. And we're going to play him on advanced playmaker on support. I'm also going to actually change our fullbacks to go on the attack duty. Just because I think they can afford to push on a little bit. You know, they're not playing with any wide men in advanced areas, Norwich. And that is maybe something that we can capitalise on. I would actually also like to 
try and stretch them wide if we can try and exploit the flanks although i mean they have a set piece immediately that was a bit of a uh, uh, I guess a panicked moment there for me watching them have a shot of course we've made a few tactical changes in recent games and the other team's instantly gone up the other end and scored but well we're going to try and make something happen here Kevin Kelly he's through Raya saves it of course former Blackburn goalkeeper was goalkeeper at the start of last season for Blackburn in that f uh, faithful 4-3 uh, win that we got we have happy memories shooting against him maybe they can ha kind of rear their head once more I'm going to look for us to exploit the flanks if we can and also look for the overlap. I want us to try and catch them out in the wide areas. You know, they're playing a very narrow system. We might be perhaps stretching ourselves too wide and leaving ourselves exposed down the middle. But I feel like it's perhaps a risk worth taking. You know, we want to get back in this game if we can. We have 25 minutes to do it. We've made all our subs. I want to make this pitch as big as possible and really stretch Norwich. Unfortunately, you can see as time progresses in this game, we're just not creating enough at the moment. We've had the one clear-cut chance and one half chance. Norwich have had neither of those, and to be honest, their finishing has been pretty poor in, to in general, but it's just not quite been good enough for us. I'm going to change the last few things that I can really afford to change, which is to change our centre-attacking mids to, I guess, go more attacking, or our centre mids to go more attacking, but... It's just time ticking away here. You know, we're leaving ourselves exposed at the back, but we're trying to chase what could be an important point. But, well, with two minutes left and time just trickling away in the top left, it's going to be all in vain. We lose here to Norwich 1-0. Not the worst result. You know, we were very competitive in the match. Norwich, a good side, perhaps underperforming a little bit in the league, going to them away from home. A little bit disappointing. You can see that game was earlier than a lot of the other games going on. So, uh, I don't know. I, I want to kind of shrug my shoulders and say I don't care, but it's disappointing, obviously, to lose any game there. Motherwell boss Lee Sharp taking a look at Gustavo Rojas, so there is definitely interest there in Rojas. As I said, £3 million, I think, would be the region where I start to contemplate an offer for Rojas. Um, we'll continue kind of just to slowly chip down the amount that we're offering him out for. I have a feeling because of his low value, Motherwell aren't going to be so keen to make an offer kind of in line with what I expect for him. Obviously, my concern really is that Motherwell put in a bit of, say, a million pounds and the board go, yep, we need the money, he's off. Because I would be left with a bit of a gap at right back. Packwood can play there. Um, we do have a few other options there, but it would be, I mean, problematic to say the least. You kind of look, Ro Rojas, obviously, great right back. Luke O'Neill would probably have to play there. Certainly not a championship quality player. That assuming the fact that... Um, we aren't unable to find, I guess, a suitable replacement in the right-back area of the pitch uh, to replace Rojas if he was to leave. But we'll just have to wait, I guess. It's just a bit of a waiting game, which is frustrating. Obviously, that Huddersfield game now coming up, we've got a little bit of a break till that. Nottingham Forest see Birmingham, a bit of a classic there. 6-2 it finished. Nottingham Forest actually going very, very strong in the league recently. Worth noting that Hull and Huddersfield in the EFL Cup both reach in the semi-final, so one of them will be going to Wembley. I think I saw Hull actually had won it. You can see actually our game against Hull has been rearranged due to the fact they've reached that final. Not ideal, but we will be playing that team who are top of the league in a midweek game, and given the fact they'll have the Cup final coming up, maybe that can play in our advantage taking on Hull City then, because uh, I imagine they'll want to rest a few players in anticipation of that game uh, against Chelsea in the final. Again, no offers in Rojas. Dundee want him on loan. I mean, what is that all about? They've also offered a future fee of £11,000 or something, which is just madness. Uh, I don't really want to go lower than £3 million. If no one comes in from at that price, I will probably just hold on to him. It's not necessarily a case of I want to sell him, but I want to try and get, you know, a, if, if he's not an irreplaceable, I guess, part of our team. You know, if we could get £3 million for him, that would be enough for me to reinvest and kind of work something out. I don't think anyone's going to come in for him. They're not at that price. I mean, he's not really for sale, if I'm being honest, Motherwell. You've just kind of stirred up some transfer interest, which I'm not not all too keen on, if I'm being completely honest. I'm not really happy with the fact that they're kind of earmarking our players with a week left of the transfer window. In our reserves, we've probably got a few players we could afford to cash in in here. Um, I am looking at James Murphy as one of those players. A player who joined us a few years ago. I've been offering him out for a little bit of money. I kind of just want to get some cash from him. He's a good player, the 25-year-old. Joined us, of course, when we were in the uh, kind of League 2. Hasn't played any football this year. Kind of just ousted from our first team, obviously, with the addition of a number of new players. Danny Nichols also uh, wanted by a few teams. South Silly Hill Moores want him on loan. His contract runs out at the end of the year. He's probably just going to be leaving us, unfortunately. We've got a few players, as you can see here, with contracts ending uh, at the end of this coming year, which... 
I guess isn't ideal, but there's a few who I will probably look to extend the contracts of, but you can see a lot of them are just kind of young players we've brought in over the years who just really aren't going to offer that much to us, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, our reserves, it's kind of just full of youngsters at this point, but we have got some, you know, very high potential players who I'm hoping are really going to kick on and obviously develop nicely at the clubs they're on loan at. And then... Maybe, just maybe, come back, get work permits and be crucial players in our first team. And there's actually a few there in the under-23s who, if I'm being completely honest, probably would be playing in our first team now. Anyway, Richmond Kickers have actually come in with an offer of £60,000 for Murphy, which is what I was hoping to get for him. So pretty happy about that. Hopefully that's a deal that can get over the line before transfer deadline day. Um, you can see, actually, I think transfer deadline day is a little bit after the 31st. In fact, no, it's not. I've lied. But um, with us playing Huddersfield on a Tuesday night, the transfer window kind of usually takes ages to progress through, so I probably won't go all the way until midnight with that. We're not really looking to sign any players. I guess the big fear is that we lose a player on transfer deadline day. Uh, they're all thereabouts. Chucky still on international duty. That last game that he has of the group stage, at least, is in February. Might be in my interest just to see uh, how he's getting on, shall we? Uh, how... How are Nigeria doing? That is a question. They're in 19th in the world ranking, so you'd expect them to do well in the African Cup of Nations. They are top of Group B with only just one game played. So, yeah, they got they are going to be going through, which is a little bit of a pain because it means we're going to be without them for even longer. Um, but, well, we'll try and adapt, I guess. You can see a lot of the teams here playing um, on the Saturday, actually, in the championships. So obviously, you're hoping that some of them slip up. And that kind of results go in our favour if we just have another look at the table. Has it changed that much, really? I mean, Sunderland, five points clear. We have played a game more still. Ah, that's odd. I thought we'd played a game less. Apparently not. I guess we can only win the games put in front of us, though, can't we? Um, that's got to be the aim. FA Cup game's going on as well. Our FA Cup game actually isn't for a few weeks, as I mentioned. And I'll mention again. I'm sure every time the FA Cup comes up, I will mention it because there'll be someone who missed it last time I mentioned it. The scheduling is kind of all over the place with this lower league database I'm using for the FA Cup. I assume that whoever created this database... Um, obviously, there's a link in the top of the description if people want to check out this database, and there has been in every single episode. But um, with this database, I imagine there's some rule, which means that FA Cup games can be played midweek, probably for the sake of helping with fixture scheduling with the lower leagues, you know, where there's like all the earlier rounds of the FA Cup. Um, but it does mean kind of there's a knock-on effect that in the latter stages, games are also played in the midweek as well. But anyway, we did get Bolton in the FA Cup, so I probably won't do that game uh, as our next live comp because they are a League One side I expect to do well against... Um, yeah, we'll see how we get on, obviously. Uh, it'd be nice to go on a little cup run, you know. Obviously, seeing Hull reach the final of the EFL Cup, I don't think it's out of the question that we can go quite far in the FA Cup. It'd be quite nice, wouldn't it, to do a bit of a Wigan uh, and try and win the uh, the championship or be in the championship with European football next year. Anyway, Chucky has suffered a sprained wrist. That was in the game against Algeria. Out for 12 to 14 days. That might be the end of his tournament. Which I don't know if that'll mean he gets sent back to the club. Either way, we're probably not going to be getting him back any sooner than we otherwise would have been because of that injury. Um, but yeah, Motherwell still was seeking a Rojas deal. My worry is that they put in a stupidly low few hundred thousand pound offer and my board accept it. And I'm kind of just clicking continue hoping that I'm not going to get that inbox item come in. Because I think given our current financial situation, it's something it wouldn't surprise me to see the board do. Um... I don't know, football manager is a little bit predictable, I think, in that regard when it comes to situations like this. But anyway, FA Cup's coming up. We've only conceded three goals in two matches in the FA Cup. We have one of the meanest defences. I mean, I don't know, what doesn't meanest? I guess good good defensively. FA Cup fifth round draw will play either Manchester United or Chelsea. About that cup run, yeah, prob probably not going to happen now, but we will be at home for that game. That is going to be really good for our finances. Obviously, we have to still beat Bolton, um, but I think we might have just found out what our next live com game may well end up being if we do, obviously, beat Bolton and make it to the FA Cup fifth round. A game against Chelsea or Manchester United. I mean, I didn't, I couldn't wish for anything else, could I? That's exactly what I wanted um, in that competition. But anyway, deadline day kicking in. This is going to be really slow to continue. Hopefully... It's not too unbearably slow. I've noticed actually today's episode is going to end up being shorter, I think, than the previous episode we did in January. Of course, fewer days to continue through today, a little bit less perhaps going on in terms of transfers. Um, but yeah, deadline day, it's upon us. It's 
probably my least favourite day of the year. Um, do I want to take part in it? The thing is, I do have money to spend. Although we don't have money, we do have money. Does that make sense? We don't have money, but we do have money because I can spend within our means. Let's have a look at what is actually available in terms of on the transfer list in England. Um, I will say that I, I strongly recommend this if you if if you're doing this kind of save specifically. Just untick like unrealistic transfers and just set the wage amount to roughly the most you'd be willing to pay for a player. Because so often, I find that the maximum wage amount, uh, sorry, the unrealistic transfers is just completely off. Anyway, Callum McGregor, an option maybe from Celtic. I mean, if I look at our team, what position would I want to get in? Probably a right back. Someone like Ryan McLaughlin could be a good little addition to our side. He currently plays for uh, Millwall. Obviously, if we're going to lose Rojas, I'm going to need an alternative. And my worry is, obviously, that this guy's going to go be worth more money than Rojas is. I mean, you can see Rojas, perhaps not as well-rounded, but um, certainly his physicals and speed more than make up for it. McLaughlin, I think, is he Liverpool trainee at one point? Yeah, he was. Went to Aberdeen, actually, you can see there. How much do they want for him? £245,000. I'm going to get a scout report on him. In fact, I already sent one off. Just because if we do lose Rojas, I am going to need a replacement, and he's probably the best player I've seen who could be a replacement for us. Uh, obviously, our, our options are kind of limited by the fact that we're kind of looking exclusively at players uh, who are English, unless I wanted to go out and buy a load of regens, which, actually, thinking about it, given our kind of current situation... It might be worth trying to get in a few young players this transfer window who I can sell on in the summer. But I don't know where I'll go. I guess Australia and then I'll kind of go from there. So one, one thing that people might not know is obviously I, I kind of talked a little bit about finding the best young players that and kind of the way I go about finding players last time out. Um, one thing that I have is I kind of have a mental checklist of teams that are kind of worth, worth um, looking at. And trying to uh, you know see if they've got any good players that have kind of sprung up. It doesn't really look like there's anything to stand out in um, Australia, but yeah, I have kind of a mental checklist. I'll go through the likes of China, Japan, South Korea, in Asia specifically. They're three very good nations that I recommend kind of checking out. Some people sometimes ask Jack, why do you play with a tribute masking off? Just how I enjoy to play the game. I enjoy kind of that spice of being able to build up a team made up of players from loads of different nations. This guy, Wee Cheng, seems pretty good. He's only 17, unambitious. He's playing first-team football for China. Um, they're probably going to want like £1.2 million for him. £1.7. It probably would be negotiated down to £1.2, so that's not really an offer I can make. Any other good players here? Not really. Let's have a look at South Korea um, for players. Again, I have this checklist. Unfortunately, South Korea, you can see, just outside of the top 50, which would impact our ability to get work permits for some players. Um, there are a few players here who I have looked at over kind of recent years. This guy looks quite good, Lee Gui Hyon. Contract expires uh, next year. Next year, yeah, in a year's time. So he might be, they might be willing to do a cut off of him, like two hundred thousand. Okay, maybe not two point two million. We just dive out of that deal. That never happened. Park Sang Hyun. This is a player I've looked at actually a number of times. I've contemplated buying. But he wanted a little bit too much. I wonder if his wage demands might have dropped. They're not willing to respond to my transfer offer because they were insulted. <laughs> That's not great. I'm not very good at this whole negotiating thing, apparently. Uh, Kim Jin Hyun, playing regular first team football at international level, 22 years old, determined could be a very good little left back actually looking at him. I guess the fact he's 22, he's probably beyond that point where you were expecting to develop that much more. Yeah, probably probably a little bit too old. Let's have a look at their just under 23s real quick. See if there's any players who stand out. Um, how do you get start players? This guy, Quack Won Hyung. I love these names, by the way. He looks really good. It's a shame his technicals are so bad. Because he's got really great physicals and really good speed. Good in the air as well. Could really probably be a good target man on support. Um, but unfortunately... Uh, I think he, he, might have, he might have trouble there. Because, I mean, his finishing's poor and his... First touch isn't great, and his passing wasn't great either. Any other players? Any others? Not really. Nothing standing out. Is he a wide man? No, he plays down the middle. So um, when it comes to finding players, I usually have kind of a rough picture in my head of what I'm looking for from certain roles. It's kind of weird, actually, with me. I'm quite a visual person. So I know some people just don't use the attributes polygon. For me, 
I can look at that and I know what each attribute kind of goes into and it allows me to go, oh, okay, so these are the areas this player excels at. I find when I stare at this long list, I find it a lot more tricky to pick out weaknesses, whereas with someone like this, for example, the fact his technicals are so low, I go, okay, what, what's he lacking? Well, he should have good first touch, it's okay. And I, I kind of, because I know what goes into each area, it's a really nice way at a glimpse, I can tell how good a player is. Obviously, I then use the kind of actual attributes to themselves to look in more details. I know some people just play without the polygon, Whereas for me, it's kind of, I find it a very, very useful as quite a, a visual person, I guess. But this guy's 18, plays at Urawa Red, so kind of the Manchester United of the, K -Le uh, of the J League, sorry. It's worth noting, actually, that with this database setup that I have, I do have Japan selected and loaded with all the real name fixes, so Japan is an actual nation. I haven't completely, exclusive, I guess, information here, I haven't completely excluded from my mind the idea of turning this into a hexagon maybe after we're done with Hereford that's something that I talked about doing for a long time actually with Lewis FC but due to kind of just circumstances at the time that series was kind of it wasn't cut short necessarily but we kind of ended quite abruptly after winning the um what you call it, after winning the Champions League just because I had a new job I was moving across the country and uh well funnily enough real life kind of takes priority over a video game <laughs> most most of the time he says um but yeah the, i mean these players don't look that great do they let's be honest there's a few maybe okay players here but nothing that kind of i instantly want to pull the trigger on as a signing you know as i said i'm kind of i'm not really looking for any position in kind of particular with um with this, I'm kind of just looking at players in general. Iran sometimes have good regions. We'll just take a look at them. He's not bad. Played a lot of first-team football for them. 21. He's a centre mid. I don't need a centre mid, really. His contract expires in six months, however, so they might take like a £100,000 bid for him. Let's find out. £180,000. I don't really want to give them a sell-on if I can avoid it. I mean, the thing is, with a player like this, if we can get him for like £120,000 or whatever, that's probably... A good enough deal for me. I don't really want to do the big sell on because obviously these players I'm kind of looking at with the intention of selling on. Don't know if he'll be interested in talking to us, but we can at least approach him. A few of these players slightly older, no other regens actually for Iran at this moment in time. Um, there's a few in the youth team, but I imagine these are all going to be pretty useless. As if they were good, they probably would have been called up to the first team anyway. Um, I'll just take a quick look at Iraq, which sounds a little bit weird, but sometimes they have some fairly good players. You can see in the world rankings, they are not too bad. They've got this guy, uh, Ali Mosin, good finishing, good pace, has the mentals of a goldfish, unfortunately. Uh, Salam, okay centre-back, not great in the air, obviously jumping reach of only nine, kind of a problem. Mohamed Ali, not great again. Um, no, there's no, nothing there. Right, let's move on to another region. I apologise. If this isn't your cup of tea, feel free to skip forward. But I find it quite nice just flicking through players, kind of, you know, going through that mental checklist I already talked about in my head of players and just seeing what they've got available. We'll take a look at the Ivory Coast next, I think, in Africa. Sometimes, pe sometimes people ask me, Jack, do a transfer window. My concern is it would just descend into this, and I don't think this is particularly entertaining. Maybe it is. Maybe for some people, this is what they want to see, but I don't feel like this would be my cup of tea. 20 years old, plays a Citadella, probably going to struggle to sign him. I don't know if there's going to be too many standout players here. This guy's not bad. Plays a Hadjik Split. I mean, his price is really low. Would he get a work permit based on his ability? That would be the hope. 20 determination, outstanding physicals. Wages are low. They're going to want a few million for him, I imagine. Like, what, 2.3? Okay, they want 21 million. Well, that's not happening, is it, Trey or Ray? I, I might just keep keep a, um, an eye on this guy. Actually, he's only on my shortlist. I must have looked at him another time a while ago. But, um, yeah, there's some players, obviously, that I keep an eye on. Of course, we have Akusu here, who's our own player. So <laughs> we won't look at him too hard. But I'm hoping he, he will break into the Ivory Coast first team sooner rather than later. I'll take a look at South Africa. I'm not going to go through too many more nations because, as I said, don't know how particularly entertaining this is, but it's kind of what I do when I'm looking for good young players. This guy plays for uh, Boa Vista. I wish, if I, I wish I'd known about that. I might have gone in for him with a Hamilton deal. Um, just sort these players by values. A few players playing for Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, there's no real kind of cheap options here, is there? Other than this guy who... I mean, he's okay. We could approach to sign him. 
Okay, he doesn't want to talk. Uh, I'll add him to my shortlist just because if he does get released, he might be a player worth looking at. I suspect, actually, usually what I found is when a player says, you know, I'm waiting uh, until nearer the end of my contract, generally speaking, means that his, he'll probably end up staying at his current club. Anyway, we'll just take a quick, a quick look at the under-20s. Nothing to stand out there. Right, we'll, we'll move on. I might have a last-minute look after the Huddersfield match just in my own time, but... Um, I'm conscious of the fact that this is a live com episode. It's not a stream. It's not as interactive. You guys don't want to watch me flick through pages after pages forever. Unfortunately, that Iranian player not interested in talking to us. He would have been a great buy as well at £150,000. And certainly a player who I think we could have shifted on for you know a, a nice little bit of profit. I kind of feel like in Football Manager... There's kind of two sides of things. There's the whole kind of match and tactic stuff, but there's also the business side of things, you know, trying to, I guess, move players in and out. Part of me wonders if Ryan McLaughlin, if I was to sign him and sell Rojas on for, say, £2 million, would that be kind of a good deal? I'm a little bit worried that Motherwell are going to come in and lowball me there, but £2 million, because I could bring him in McLaughlin as a replacement at right back for 200000 That would leave me with about £1.7 million profit which would obviously just help us because of our current financial situation. But no, still no offers in Rojas. Um, it doesn't exactly surprise me. I'm going to stick him, obviously, back as a first-team player. We'll keep that £2 million asking price. I doubt he's going to go now unless Motherwell are really put in an insulting offer and the board choose to accept it. Uh, there's a few players here. Matthew Pennington doesn't look that bad, the 28-year-old. Don't really need a centre back though right now. I mean, what position do I need realistically? Like, what area of the pitch am I lacking? And it's probably a left back, maybe a centre back. You know, maybe centre back is an area that I could look to improve in. Let's just see if there's any left backs available real quick. I don't think there will be, but I mean, you never know, do you? Um, I could also, I guess, look at players whose contracts are expiring in six months. Um, just see if any of them are going to come available. Ross Stewart here. I mean, he's a striker, a left mid, and a left back. It's an interesting combination of positions. Ash uh, Kigbu here. Not actually that bad of a player. Um, mentals are not ideal, but physically, obviously, great strength. His agility is a bit oddly good, I guess, for a, a player at this level. He's played at Wigan for a number of years. Spent ten played 10 games in the championship for them. You can see he actually left uh, Man City a few years ago now. He's okay, he's not great. George Williams here of MK Don's an option perhaps. Right footed only. Don't don't need a right back, and I like to have a left footed player on the left hand side. Keen Byron, or Brian even, twenty six years old, left footed. Could he do a job at full back on support for us? Maybe. I don't know how much of an improvement to be honest he is on Kavner. Obviously, there's not much point in bringing in a replacement player if he's not an improvement on what you've already got. Actually, looking at it here, he does have a few edges on him when he is 26, as opposed to Kavner's uh, 29. But, I mean, there's not enough of a difference, really, is there here? I mean, what are they looking for? He's probably transfer listed by request. You know what? I don't think we're going to be making any signings. I don't want to sign a player for the sake of signing a player. Um, but, I mean, there's no real player. If there was suddenly a player who just became available... And was within our budget, and I felt a I, he would add a lot to the first team, or b I could sell him on for some money. Kind of, I guess that would change my tune slightly, but that just really doesn't seem to exist. But anyway, let's get into this game against Huddersfield. Team should be fairly well rested. You can see here it is indeed. Unfortunately, Tom Davies obviously he picked up a virus. I don't think I actually talked about that. I saw it pop up, but was probably just in the middle of talking. But we're bringing Stephen Boyd for him. But no, the team as a whole condition looks very very good in our camp today. Unfortunately, Lennon still out injured. A bit of a big miss for us there. Hoping, obviously, uh, that we can have an improved performance today. Madison going to come back into the side. I'm going to play Needham. And um, I think we will actually stick with Butyman as our centre mid on defend for this game. Uh, obviously, very, very strong kind of starting eleven for today's match. Lacking a few players. But, you know what? We're at home against Huddersfield. We beat them last time we played them. And they were actually really high up in the table last time we played them. You can see they're in 12th. So, they're within three points of us. Our goal difference is superior to theirs. But, uh, well, a defeat here would see them kind of claw back, I guess, the gap on us. So let's see if we can get a good result, I guess. We're looking to obviously keep pushing on for a top-half finish. Still kind of, I guess, having a, a hopeful gaze upon the playoff spots. But in reality, 
I think that's going to be a tool to ask for us today. And uh, with this season, you know, it'd be a, it'd have to be a tremendous second half of the year to really make that happen. You know, maybe with a few of the players who haven't got work permits, I might feel a little bit more confident about achieving that. But unfortunately, obviously, we have to work with the players I've got. And while I'm hoping Rojas at right back can have a game where he doesn't dwell too much on the fact he hasn't got his move to another well, I'm also hoping for a game where Kevin Kelly doesn't do shots like that all game. Running through on goal, was bearing down on net, smashed it well wide of the mark in the end, the uh, the striker. Not ideal at all. But no, Huddersfield, they're a mid-table team. We beat them last time we met them. That was away from home. They were on good, in good form then. I'm hoping, obviously, that we can get a good result here. Two defeats in a row would be a little bit of a sour way, I guess, to end out uh, the January period, particularly when you consider, you know, we did kind of get a little bit back on the straight and narrow with some good results in the not-so-distant past. And, uh, well, we've got a set-piece here. Madison whips it in, headed away, but only as far as Madison puts it back in the mixer. Keeper comes out. He's in no-man's line. Needham could have pulled the trigger there, could have scored, to be honest. And in the end, it's hoofed clear by Huddersfield. And now Rojas getting it back forward. We could be caught short at the back here. They've got a lot of men coming forward. And, uh, well, it's a great ch chance here for Hirup, or Harrop, rather, who squeezes it in. And makes it 1-0. And we've just been well and truly hit on the break there. Defensively, shape was questionable. I thought actually Gustavo Rojas kind of put us in some trouble. Had a lot of players committed to the attack. The right back picked up the ball on the halfway line. Could have either you know, played it down the line or played a big ball into the box. Instead, he tried to play an intricate pass to the edge of the box. Gave away possession. And from there, we were always a little bit out of position. And well, unfortunately for us, Huddersfield have punished us early on in this game. The snow is starting to come down. Or is it rain? I don't know. The 2D pitch has changed. Um, I mean, this isn't great so far. No, sh Well, just the one shot on target, but no clear-cut chances. No half chances. The team as a whole, just not not a great team performance today. I need to get them in at halftime. We need to grill them, give them a shout. And, well, hopefully we can crack on and have a better second half. But it's important, I guess, now that we don't concede uh, in the latter stages of this half and that we do get into halftime at just the one goal deficit, which is what it's going to be. It's been a game, a few chances so far. I'm going to tell the players to show me something else. Not the greatest of performances. Let's have a better second half if we can, please. And, uh, well, see what we can do with this match. It's going to be tricky, but I kind of look at our team as a whole. We've got a chance here. Madison, well, I thought he was going to score one of his kind of trademark free kicks. Unfortunately, it's blocked. But we have a lot of men committed to the attack here. Kavner, the left back. This is a similar situation to where we conceded from before. But this time, we don't give away the ball. Kelly might break through. Dispossessed. Beautyman nods it back to Dickey. Back with possession now. Rojas, Beautyman, Needham. Kelly, Madison, lovely build-up play. Is the finish there? It's not. Madison, rebound goes wide as well. Two tremendous chances. Madison has had a few opportunities. He's squandered both. Now we have a set piece to deal with. Dickey heads it clear, but only as far as Harrop, the goal scorer. Huddersfield go back now to Billing at centre-back, who is well, being put under pressure. And we do win the ball. Now can we hit them on the break? Beckford, he has pace, and he has open grass ahead of him to run into. Look at him. He beats everyone. Whips in the ball. Kelly's there. Beautiful run by Beckford, uses his pace, uses his determination, beautiful cross into the box, and well, it was Kevin Kelly, a man who is very, very good in the air, who, uh, well, he took that finish with relative ease, the ball whipped in, lovely ball in, in truth, on that volley, cushions it in, opens up his body, slots it away, and uh, well, great response you'd have to say in the second half, we've had that clear-cut chance that Madison wasted, but we have now got back into this game finally, it's been a little bit overdue, and uh, well, we look up for this match now. It's a tricky game here against Huddersfield. You know, a mid-table side. The kind of side that if we want to finish top half this year, we need to be beating. And well, we are going to continue our, I guess, offence on their goal. And well, Kevin Kelly, he scores again. He got four against Wigan earlier on this month. It's his 20th goal of the season. It's his second of this match. We move up to ninth. And it all came from this Kavner throw in. Little ball inside. Ford there. Passes it across. Lovely pass by Anthony Ford. And Kelly, deflected shot actually in the end, but we won't complain. In the history books, it goes down as his goal. No one's going to see that goal as a replay. And, uh, well, it is his 20th goal of the season. Superb play by him. And actually, we're on the attack again here. What has happened to us in the second half? We have been possessed. Madison, options on ahead. Kevin Kelly could be looking for the hat-trick. Turns his man. Beckford, can he keep it in? He can. Passes it back across. Kevin Kelly, he gets his hat-trick. That is a very, very quick hat-trick indeed. The goal scored in the space of 11 minutes. And well, from one goal down, a shouty, shouty team talk. I didn't change the personnel. I stuck with the players we had. 
And, uh, well, Kevin Kelly, he's just become a relentless beast in front of goal. Three clear-cut chances we've had since the half-time. We are creating a lot more. We look a lot better going forward. And, uh, well, they've got a chance here. It's a set piece. It hits the woodwork. And, well, maybe that is going to stifle the momentum that we've built up. Ledston, I'm going to bring on for Nidham, who is on a booking. Madison's had a really poor game once again. I'm going to bring in Stephen Boyd for him. Stephen Boyd, I've got to be honest, a player who's not played that many games for us. But... When he has played for us, he's always got goals and assists. He's been kind of our alternative to Madison. Towards the end of last year, he kind of filled that void. And uh, this season, he's played a handful of games, and he's contributed quite a lot. You'd have to say, the fact that five players for Huddersfield are able to, well, would have been able to get the rebound in before one of our players got there, a tiny bit concerning, perhaps. But, well, we're going to stick on the front foot. It served us well so far. And while we're on the attack here, Ford, Kelly... Boyd is ahead of him. Ford, Kelly again. Could he get his fourth? He can get his fourth. For the second time this month, he scores four goals in a game. This man is a machine. Obviously on loan until the end of next year from Watford, a player who I'd love to sign permanently. Right now, you know, I have looked at him. They want £21 million. I don't quite have that much money yet, but he's only 20 years old, the Scottish striker. He's been superb for us. He loves playing for Hereford. We're one of his favourite clubs. I'm one of his favourite personnel, and well, he just loves scoring. And well, we're on the attack again here. Ball whipped in, cleared away. He's on the edge of the box. He lays it to Ford unselfishly, who slots it away. What a finish that is by Anthony Ford. This second half has been what we need to see in the second half of the season. 5-2 now against Huddersfield. I thought Kelly was going to grab his fifth here. You know, he takes it down. It's a lovely little flick. Can we? Can we just? I know. I know Kelly has good flair, but this pass. I mean. You don't see this very often in the 3D match engine. The ball gets whipped in here. He chests it down. Then just a little back heel flick through his leg. And then four. What a goal, mate. That's a lovely finish. It's a lovely move as a whole. Kelly showing a real bit of kind of flair there to get that pass away. And, um, well, I love watching that. 5-2 now. We look superb in this game. Uh, Hull City who top the league winning 1-0. It's an okay result. We don't need, really need to worry about them. The teams that we're looking at are the teams in the playoffs. They're really who we're realistically looking to close down. And while Huddersfield, I noticed in the league, they've not had the greatest of goal differences. And I think it's results like this which have really hurt their goal difference. They've not looked very good defensively in this second half. And while they are going forward now, but even a goal now, I mean, it would be a consolation. Washington, he smashes it way wide of the mark. It's going to kind of just amount for nothing. And well, two minutes left in this game. I'd love to get a sixth. I don't think it's going to happen, but 5-2... Still an absolutely kind of tremendous result for us to get there. A massive win to end, obviously, the second of these two longer episodes. I do hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been another hour-long episode, and I was sat thinking it was going to be shorter. We've done exceptionally well there, boys. You've done brilliantly to turn it around. A 9.9 .9 rating for Anthony Kelly. Ford played well. The subs didn't play too badly either. All in all, it all just kind of came uh, together nicely. We move up to ninth. We're on 46 points. I mean, I'm still looking at Villa, who are in sixth on 50 points. If we can put in more performances like that, and more kind of, uh, I guess, performances as our recent form has shown, I think we can continue to push up the league. We've got great players. We're scoring goals for fun. If we can just tighten up a little bit defensively, I think we can grind out a few more wins and turn a few of the draws that we had earlier on. You know, a lot of nil-nils earlier on in the season. If we turn those to wins, I think it could be... Um, a really impressive end to the season, but I mean, we'll have to see how we go. Kevin, Kevin Kelly, just absolutely superb. One of the best performances I think we've had in recent Hereford memory. Our form now, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. You know, we've won two episodes, of course, today. Beating Brentford and beating Huddersfield, two massive results. A great ho home win, of course, against Huddersfield. And that kind of ends a really tough run of away games that we have played. Now we can focus on some nice home games. We've got Sheffield United who are in 21st. We've got Ipswich in 22nd. Sunderland in 3rd is coming up. Villa in 6th. I may be tempted to do as a live com. Um, but obviously we have done quite two long episodes here. So I would like to get a little bit further into this save before we perhaps come back next time. But I feel like that Villa game might be tempting. I guess we'll see how the league is looking uh, as that match approaches. But anyway guys, that is going to wrap this up from me. As I mentioned on the last kind of long episode like this one. I do greatly appreciate your support. I hope you've been enjoying these. If you'd like to see more of these, maybe let me know. I don't feel like I could commit to doing these once every season but I feel like it's quite nice just to show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes kind of what goes on I guess here at Hereford so yeah that's all from me guys thank you for watching it is me Jack and I will talk to you guys in a bit I'm out